late 60s, around 1968, my, my, I was having problems. And in fact, every day before I went in the ring, I would do, go through all kinds of exercise stuff and, and to, to break into a little sweat and everything else, because that seemed like it loosened up things so I could go in the ring. But I remember going to places like Japan or Australia where there's such a long, long trip, especially in the 60s, where it would take 30 some hours. And I'll tell you, uh, when I used to get off of these uh, places, whether Japan or Australia, I used to be in such agony with my back. And I used to do all these things, trying to loosen up my back so I could go in the ring. I remember one time I wrestled this guy, Shohai Baba, for over an hour. And uh, I got scared the last 15 minutes because I couldn't feel my legs while I was in the ring. He had weakness in both legs. He really was unable to walk because basically what happened is uh, with the, this is a model of the spine, and what happened is uh, the spinal cord, which is the yellow structure that you can see here, proceeds through the spinal canal all the way down, and it goes in this model from the neck all the way down to the sacral area through these bones which protect it in the spinal canal. And over the years, due to his incredible uh, physical uh, endeavors in working out and lifting weights, the bone in his spine had become three to four times larger than it normally is in terms of his joints. And then there's a ligament that covers the spinal cord that also hypertrophied or became three to five times larger than it should. So what happened is the spinal canal, this opening, became smaller and smaller so that it should be like this, and it became like that. So when that stenosis or narrowing occurs in the spinal canal, when one attempts to walk, the discs, which are shock absorbers, flatten out just a bit, a millimeter or two, and then further compromise this canal, pinch the spinal cord, and then you develop what's called ischemia, lack of blood supply to the spinal cord. It's kind of the same thing that happens in a heart attack. You get lack of blood supply to the heart and you get angina, you get pain, you get aching of your heart. And when it happens to the nerves, you get aching and pain in the distribution of those nerves. So that when he attempted to walk, he had extreme excruciating pain that literally was paralyzing him in terms of his ability to motivate or move. You lose function in your bowel, your bladder, and uh, you're unable to ambulate, and you become paralyzed. He would be restricted to a wheelchair and uh, probably have no bowel or bladder function. I was somewhat unprepared for what we experienced at the time of surgery. I, I do a lot of this surgery. We probably do, I probably do 100, 150 of these operations a year, so that it, it's not routine, but it becomes something that we commonly do and we experience. And in the great majority of patients, in, in older or elderly patients, the bone is usually somewhat osteoporotic or soft, so that uh, when you attempt to remove it, it's rather straightforward. In Bruno, basically, the operation consists of placing the patient face down on the operating room table. Then an incision is made in the back, right in the midline. And his muscles are so well developed and so huge that the, the skin is about out to about this level. So we make an incision and then we go right down the middle and separate the muscles from the bone. And then we put a retractor in to open up the space so that we have good visualization of these bones which are called the spinous processes. After removing these spinous processes in approximately three segments where he had the very severe stenosis. We encountered the lamina, or this bone, and uh, I started to drill the bone, and smoke started to come out of the drill because the bone was so hard, uh, it was like drilling through cement uh, because of the incredible calcium that was laid down from his physical fitness and his weightlifting all of his life. We, we took this off like so. And then the ligamentum flavum is this material here that uh, was compressing the spinal cord. 
the, the normal thickness of the ligament that comes across here is uh, two, two to three millimeters or so. Uh, the thickness of Bruno's was uh, close to half an inch uh, to three quarters of an inch that was digging into the spinal cord. After we remove the spinous processes and also the lamina, then we get down into the middle of the spinal canal uh, and we, we then found that the spinal canal was covered by a very thick ligament uh, that normally is a few millimeters thick. But in Bruno, it was almost an inch thick. And this is the material right here. This is a picture that we took at the time of the surgery. This is the material that was literally markedly compressing his spinal cord. And then we had to use an operating microscope to dissect this material off of the covering of the spinal cord in order not to damage the underlying nerves. This is the appearance of the, of the spinal cord, the, spinal can, the, the dura covering the, all of the nerves here, uh, expanded and now uh, getting, getting new blood supply in order to uh, prevent the uh, the ischemia that was causing the pain before. The whiteness on this picture is the uh, spinal cord itself, which is fully exposed over two to three segments. The, the concern is always in somebody who has neurological compromise to begin with, that when you're going from back to front and you're coming through the bone and then the ligament and then down to the spinal cord, one must be extremely careful, and this is where the microscopic techniques and the operating microscope comes into play, because if you go a millimeter or two deep, you can cause paralysis of the spinal cord uh, and of the nerves there under, so that it has to be a very tedious, meticulous, very slow process in which the bone, the ligament is removed, and then the dura is exposed without compromising it any further because his, his spinal canal was already compromised about 75% so that he had 25% space left out of 100% uh, in which he was still able to move and function. Following this operation, we were extremely delighted. He was able to get up and on day one, he was walking up and down the halls of the hospital, uh, basically relieved of his pain. Uh, but then he called me in about a year later and said that the symptoms were coming back again. And uh, we re-imaged him with another MRI and saw that above the level where we had decompressed, he had again developed a moderate to severe degree of stenosis or narrowing. Uh, and uh, then it was necessary to go in once more and remove that portion above that at the time was not functionally giving him, a, giving him a problem, but subsequently when he got back into his exercise and, and movement, uh, became a, 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 a disturbance and a problem. And we, we took care of that in, a, in the same fashion, but it wasn't nearly the operation that it was the first time. You know, most patients do get back to a, a good functional life and do most of the things they wanted to beforehand, uh, but Bruno was really the exception in the sense that uh, you know, his lifelong commitment to physical activity didn't cease with the surgery. And uh, he started to get back into a training program and I subsequently saw him in a few months later and he said that not only was he walking but he was jogging and he was getting up into three miles, four miles, five miles. So he, he, he got back to uh, an incredible uh, functional level following this again, due to his fitness and his training and, and the incredible will that he has. For me, it just, uh, I, I always had such tremendous, tremendous respect for Dr. Maroon, his accomplishment, everything that he did. And just the notion that, that to get to meet him, then to have this experience of him doing the surgeries to me, you know, it just, uh, it's just become, for me, even though I don't see him often or I don't talk often, to me, it, it, I just feel so privileged that I had the opportunity to get to meet and know such a man. And I mean that sincerely.